1992 versus now. Some bull markets create cult following for equity as an asset class. True. 1992 had two heroes, but we only speak about one. Making money in a short burst of time is also something which has happened now, it happened then. And here were people who were called investors, but they were basically traders. Hindustan Lever does not know who uses Lux Soap. But how do you say that? Yes, Still, the broker is safe. I mean, GameStop is a great example of what a bunch of people acting together can do. What could take 15 days to spread now takes 15 seconds to spread. That's all. The hype that was created very recently in Yes Bank, right? So I never bought any of the stocks recommended by Harshad Mehta. I look at the investor as Abhimanyu. Your 1 crore portfolio has become 70 lakhs or 75 lakhs. Correct. So today people are, you know, still in that Covid fever. In uh, 92 we said Harshad Bhai will not fail. Huh. He's God. Today we are saying the momentum will not fail. Yeah. Momentum is God. Supra, in this video, we are going to talk on the topic 1992 versus now. Why 1992 for a comparison? The reasons are because I see a lot of parallels. Let me explain the parallels. First, some bull markets create cult following for equity as an asset class. True. More people across different sections of society aspire to get into equity. So they all start try their hand, taste success within a short burst of time, become great believers in the asset class in a burst and start thinking that this asset class is everything. There are heroes. You, you have heroes in every bull market. 1992 had two heroes, but we only speak about one. The current bull market has probably many heroes. So this hero worshipping is also something that has got a lot to do with the growing of the cult, with the rate of growth of the cult. So everything happens at a blistering compounding pace. People getting into market also, in 1992 they had to overcome entry because brokers would not easily open accounts. Today the market first went into their drawing room and then into their computers and then into their phones and then into their bank accounts. So the market has gone into the investor's ecosystem. In 1992, the investor went into the market ecosystem. The market going into the investor's economic ecosystem is much bigger as an impact than the investor going into the market ecosystem because there are natural hurdles that happen. Making money in a short burst of time is also something which has happened now, it happened then in 15 months, 18 months, it happened in such a way that nobody imagined it would happen. And the economic circumstances also changed from extreme gloom when we didn't have money to buy fuel to a complete bullishness uh, before it collapsed. And in this case, extreme gloom when you had COVID, the first COVID, to extreme bullishness now when we are, uh, you know, kind of slowly coming out of the second phase. A lot of parallels and a lot of similarities the contexts also have some, uh, you know, common factors. How do you see these two circumstances? And can you throw a little light on 1992 first and then come to the parallels? Uh, 1992, like you rightly said, doing a transaction was not easy unless you lived in Bombay. If you were in Rajkot, Delhi, uh, any other place, you had to still access Mumbai. So whether you were in Coimbatore, whether you were in Chennai, you had to get somebody who would do your transaction. That was not easy. So you had to go through a sub-broker and a broker in, say, Coimbatore Stock Exchange who would have a relationship in Bombay 
and you would do a transaction right it was not so simple and there was a huge jobbing difference <laughs> say hindalco was quoting at 600 rupees it would not quoted 600 it would quoted 575 600 you went to buy you paid 600 plus brokerage which means 612 because you paid at least 2% brokerage and when you sold you pay, you got 575 minus it so if you made a mistake of buying instead of selling or selling instead of buying it wiped out all the gains that you would have made for that week or maybe for that month so it, cost of intermediation was very high doing a transaction was very difficult you had to have a reference you had to send the money in advance and you would get the money after a month you would have forgotten that you had sold a share because the settlements used to be 15 days it used to be even one month or the bombay stock exchange would say this settlement is being merged remember one very important thing sebi was not yet born or sebi was not yet active right nothing of that had happened there was no national stock exchange so shares had to be physically bought transferred in your name sent to the company and the company would say these shares are fake so getting the shares transferred in your name getting all that done was a big nightmare but still people came in because people thought oh here is my i can make money without even any uh, putting any capital because you had to pay money only at the settlement so if you bought on day 1 and sold on day 14 you didn't have to make any payment there were no margin requirements so lot of people came in on the on day 1 and sold on day 14 and there would be some people who would be waiting on 14th day to buy it and sell it on the 16th day because they had the ability to take delivery for 3 days so they could lock their money for 3 days and here were people who were called investors but they were basically traders who were using that 14 day window in which to buy and sell today that is ruled out but today doing a transaction is very easy one more thing in the 1990s uh, i mean 92 and 93 is when the event collapsed but the uh, frenzy had started even in 90 and 91 the market was going up people were buying nobody would chase you your friends would say i made money but i can't even imagine a broker calling up a retail guy and saying do business with me they were just not bothered the brokers were the arrogant guys who just didn't bother but the yes the uh, intermediary the sub broker so to say would call and it was very risky market right if a sub broker collapsed you had bought shares you had paid for it but some other person had made a huge loss and did not pay and the sub broker collapsed you had no recourse you could do nothing if you got cheated by a member of bombay stock exchange you had to break your head against the wall so doing transactions was very difficult but still it attracted people remember you could open any account in anybody's name in the my name of a minor in the name of a huf there was no pan cards anybody could open and you could tell your broker acha profit hai change the name of the check give the check in my mother's name give the check in my grandmother's name those things you could do so yes people did all that but people lost money if you come to what is happening now similar things are happening but you are chased far more often by the relationship managers of the big brokers there is nothing called a small broker today if he is a small broker he is dead or he is doing a very niche segment of only 10 clients or 12 clients he is not bothered about doing other people's business or you are the biggies they don't even know you the ceo of a broking company does not know his customer he doesn't care like hindustan liver does not know who uses lux soap similarly it's a product where it is uh, the risk is already taken care of they don't really care who is buying who is selling who is winning who is losing so it is it is become like that i remember in 92 you would know all your clients you would know which client has capability to buy how much so if one client who normally buys 100 shares gives an order for 1000 shares you would pick up the phone and say what's happening send me the margin you know so broke many brokers got killed by customers who had no ability to take losses today that may not happen brokers are well funded they are part of a big uh, organization the house they got bank the house is safe but people could get killed so you are saying that the sub brokers of yester years uh, were a risk to the investor right and today you are saying the arms of the brokerages are probably a risk because they are inducing to trade more correct in the earlier instance you are saying the sub brokers had clients who traded more or they themselves traded more and that this trading could wipe you out Correct. but now it's more direct they don't trade 
they induce you to trade and it's your losses which will wipe you out Correct. so you can really can't give excuses that's your point Correct. Now, that reminds me i had dealt with two sub brokers before uh, 1992 and interestingly both of them got wiped out i was lucky to survive because i had all the deliveries taken and i was not owed money by them if i was owed money by them if it was significant yeah. then i would have got wiped out whereas since the money is owed were small we just let it go but that is not the situation for many people so in that sense i think i was lucky you know understanding what you are saying and you know looking at no main main brokers would be wiped out Correct. not just small sub brokers a main broker suppose there was a main broker with a 3 4 crore net worth and two sub brokers failed for 2 crores each that was end of the main broker so, so you are saying regulation has made the broker relatively safer now than broker the and the investor see i don't mind an investor getting wiped out because of his own mistakes if he took the risk without understanding and he got wiped out that's okay but how do you say that you had the carvi fiasco just a year and a half ago and there was another mumbai based brokerage which i will not name where also the the money uh, of uh, the investor clients uh, was uh, probably lost because yeah. of some other uh, you know transaction yeah, then terrible. there was another case where you know a broker had you know speculated or jobbed in one of a very large conglomerate companies and uh, the losses were you know were borne by the uh, retail clients so it's not as if the clients no. are safe in my no, opinion so no, what you are no. saying yeah, is not entirely I agree, true i agree the risk i never thought a, a demand service provider can go kaput but it happened it happened in case of carvi 3 4000 crores got wiped out i do not know how much money has been recovered yes that risk is there but brokers are i think reasonably well capitalized but i never thought this risk could happen so you are saying even these three incidences are not uh, something which you can expect to happen across the system no, so but it has happened there are 28 such defaults the right. big ones are the ones you spoke about very many small ones if a small broker uh, went kaput and he had a demat uh, service and he went kaput to the extent of 50 lakhs in indore you wouldn't even hear about him because it is 3 4000 crores and carvi big but still the broker is safe even in this i don't think the broker's assets have been uh, you know identified isolated if he has assets in some other names the money of you know i think they still probably live well i don't think that they have lost their personal wealth no but in india that is true it is a retail guy who always loses money the industrialist so the, is not poor i mean so in a way the house is still somewhat safe house is safer than the individual yes but yeah there is risk the risk is not disappeared okay it may have changed form okay so in that sense though things change the more things change they yeah. tend to remain the same that's your view that's the kind of summary. but at least today there's a regulator all right you yes. can lodge your police complaint somebody yes. will understand what has happened yes. in 92 the police didn't even understand what happened yes yes that And has changed yeah it was a nightmarish even lodge an fire what about uh, how investor opinions were influenced in 1992 and how investor opinions are influenced now how are we creating the hype that difference can you tell about how hype was created in 1992 because even though there was a series of harshad mehta and you know long number of episodes which i tended to watch it was more theatrical and not really teaching the investor anything related to the investment process and how things happened there were a few scattered examples can you throw some light on how investor opinion was mobilized and converted into hype that dominated the system uh there were a few people who could write about the market and swing the market today that number has changed dramatically it is not two people three people who are swinging the market it is 200 300 people there are people on youtube there are people on twitter and you know all kinds of people who can create a uh, view about anything those days so the importance of news magazines and newspapers was very high and people would believe it to be gospel truth some of us would know what is going to get published this uh, this is going this company is going to be mentioned on that day you sell and these kind of things were happening today i don't know whether that is so easy to do but i mean gamestop is a great example of what a bunch of people acting together can do and it will take the uh, uh, regulator much more time to understand that such things happen acting in collusion in the law it is assumed that you can act with your brother it doesn't assume you can act with your brother in law right and here you could act with anybody you can create a group on facebook on twitter somewhere go short on a share go long on a share any of those things could happen there used to be something called a bow copy 
which used to get printed every day and he would carry some lines below and all that was considered to be gospel. If you were a Gujarati speaking guy staying in Bombay, you had a natural advantage because everybody would be talking about it. So you heard people talking on the railway tracks or on the trains and all those people and that used to spread. So I think what could take 15 days to spread now takes 15 seconds to spread. That's all. Because you get it, you just WhatsApp it, you may not read it, you may not understand it, but you just send it across. So with very little understanding, more spreading is happening and if everybody goes and buys 100 shares, the power of small numbers, the number of participants is increased. I think the number of participants only increase more. So what happened in 91, 92 is it spread but didn't spread so much. Also remember, Sham, the importance of how much of trade could be done in a day was only 200 to 225 Correct. crores. Today, 225 crores is something which one broker would be Correct. easily doing. Correct. And there are hundreds of brokers at least of that size. So today the market is 30, 40,000 crores. That time it used to be 20, 250 crores. There was no comparison. So the people's ability to buy was also limited. So there was a restricted number of people. So if you take the Harshad Mehta scam or later on even the Ketan Parik scam, the number of people impacted was less. We know all those people, so we think everybody was affected, but whole of India was not impacted. But now if it is impacted, I think a school teacher in Siliguri or a school teacher in Jammu and everybody is going to be impacted because everybody, the bank manager is saying, if you do this, open a broking account, open a three-in-one account, you know, there is so much of pressure. So today the spread is greater, far wider. There are more RMs selling direct equity. <coughs> direct equity is less regulated than mutual fund or even insurance. So much more money is made by banks and their brokerage arms than by selling other products because the money is in the churn. So those things happen. So the risks have increased. The number of players have increased. The so number of players impacted will also be dramatic now than it was in 92. So that reminds me of something very recent, what we have seen in recent years. Uh, we had uh, the hype that was created very recently in Yes Bank, right, in the last three, four years. And uh, this hype was sustained for such a long time and then it just went into vertical fall, uh, it almost went to zero. And unless the government put a backstop, it probably would have gone to zero. Similarly, you have the case of Vodafone, which uh, has fallen from 120 rupees to 2-3 rupees and then again it's uh, been seeing these things. So you are seeing a number of companies which have gone to zero. Uh, it can happen to anybody. But uh, you are saying that this impact will hit more people. Yes, there are uh, more people. It can hit more people. The reason you think this will happen is the power of the influencer. Correct. And the ease with which people have got access to in implement the that influence to make Doing a transaction. The transaction yes. So, this can happen again, right? This, yes, this impact it will, can happen it again. Will. It's it will. It's not a question of whether it can. Okay. It will. I do not know whether it will happen in 2021, 22 or 23. That's about all. But it will happen. So, I'm coming to the next thing, uh, you know, which uh, we all think, right? In 1992, I knew that something was not right about um, what was happening in the market. So, I never bought any of the stocks recommended by Harshad Mehta. So that was my insurance. You know, I stay away from that so that I survive if something happens. And I also think that if something goes wrong, it will not affect me, right? A lot of people in the market today carry this similar thinking. I have taken my ideas from this cross-section of people, you know, I have copied this Twitter handle, I have copied this PMS, I have copied this fund manager, I have copied this big momentum investor, I have copied this hugely successful investor. So we have these uh, influences and my portfolio is an amalgam of these influences. So if something happens in the market where to react sh very, very uh, quickly or very sharply, nothing will happen to me because I am shielded or protected by uh, their aura. To my mind, those who thought they were protected by Harshad Mehta Sara did not survive. They were not protected. Me, who was trying to stay away from Harshad Mehta Sara, also had a knock on the chin. Uh, now, what do you think will be the impact if something were to happen in the market and valuations were to contract? Because valuation contraction is something very natural and likely to happen. True. So what do you think will happen to all these millions of investors who believe that they have 
taken these ideas from the right sources and they have the aura of so many sources protecting them. This collective aura, they think it can help the investor. I look at the investor as Abhimanyu. I mean, I would look even at US like Abhimanyu. They entered Afghanistan, they didn't know what to do. They spent 20 years and they got out with a bloody nose, right? Why would you think as a retail investor, you're very different? John Biden had, Joe Biden had all the help of all the best advisors and he still got badly mauled. So the small guy will come in and he'll get carried away slowly by one of the influencers, right? He will start with five, six influencers. He cannot copy everything of everybody. So he will end up having a very concentrated portfolio of say 80% of his money in one stock or 70% of it because you know how to pick a stock does not know you uh, does not mean you know how to do sizing. It does not know how you whether you know how to do portfolio construction. If you buy steel and if you buy, uh, you know, uh, refractories and all that, everything is steel. So once steel goes down, this will all go yeah. down. Or if you are completely dependent on infrastructure or completely on pharma because pharma has done well. So you invested in pharma funds, you have bought pharma shares, you have bought hospital shares. You see everything going up, everything can go down together. It is just the theme and you not understanding that you are following a theme. And you're buying more because it's doing well, right? So these kind of mistakes, what stops you from making these kind of mistakes? You will make these kind of mistakes. And if you made, a, let's say, a very basic mistake, your family has not been covered with medical insurance, market has gone down a little, your one crore portfolio has become 70 lakhs or 75 lakhs, that is exactly the day you need 25 lakhs. The worst time to remove money, perhaps, maybe it will go down even purchase. further. You don't have a choice. So one mistake of the market, one mistake of your own making, this combination can completely bring you down to the earth. So you are saying that uh, the skew which we create because of our favorable biases True. is something that will hurt in every market context, 90s or right. now or even 20 years later. True. And you are saying that the skew is quite high. Yes. In situations like these where the market see extreme swings within short periods of time, 18 months or 15 months, market see a massive swing. The economic uh, mood goes from despondency mm -hmm. to euphoria. You are saying that in these phases the skew creates a certain investor behavior which has to be uh, you know, carefully controlled, curbed and kept in check. And uh, would you say that investors should, a, should focus principally are primarily on the skew in their portfolios towards what has worked very heavily in these 15, 18 months because that was my uh, learning in 1992. Uh, those who had uh, HM stocks uh, had very heavy skew of HM stocks, 60, 70, 80 percent of Correct. them. And when they fell, this 80 percent fell to a very low level and that was the end of their uh, uh, journey. journey in the market. Uh, those of us who didn't have that skew, our stocks fell and they went back. Correct. So today people are, you know, still in that COVID fever, though they didn't contract COVID, they have contracted the impact of COVID and that impact is there in their portfolio. So they are buying these uh, companies which will make Molnupravir or somebody who has got hospitals. So you are seeing how Apollo hospital valuation went yeah, up, uh, where the fundamentals have not changed so much, but the valuation has gone 4x. So this you are seeing across the board. Yeah. So the skew in the portfolio also is very high because when you see portfolios of people, they have constructed stocks which benefited from uh, this 15-16 uh, uh, month crisis. Do you feel that when this crisis blows over or when the economic circumstances change, this skew is going to hurt people very badly? Yes, because it's very important to be very disciplined as an investor to do asset allocation regularly. Especially in a rising market, you have to sell equity. Now you sell a share, at, let's say you, sold, you bought uh, Apollo Hospital at 900, you sold at 3000, you're feeling like an idiot because now the price is 4000. So when even if your broker tells you this is worth selling, you'll say, it's going up every day, why should I sell? So that it is impossible to sell in a rising market unless you're professionally advised. You will not do it, it's very difficult and if you have a very good advisor, you may do it. So that is ruled out. You do not know the currency risk that you are running. So you have, I mean, if you see another uh, craze is now people investing in the US. So that could hurt. Any of these things could hurt. And one bad move, and if it takes away 30-40% of your portfolio, and on that day you need money to pay EMI, you lose your job, or something like that happens, you can get wiped out in a day or two. <clears throat> you don't even realize how quickly this animal moves. This is like a tiger. It is one pound, one hit. 
and your head will be severed. You don't understand. You just watched it on National Geographic. You are not gone and face it. When you face it, I do not know how you are going to react. Normally, your reaction is much worse than the market reaction. So if you just stand still, let's say you bought at a high and the market goes down, the most important thing is not to sell at a low. Okay. Because the market could at least recover. If you have good quality, so but if you reduce recover. the skew, then you are a little safer, right? If you, if yeah, you, yeah. Uh, so you have to. Safe. No, no. You have to reduce your skew. But reducing your skew is easier said than done. Which guy will sell his uh, rising yes. uh, stars? He will not sell his rising stars. He will say, hey, "This is not doing well, so I will not sell this." This is doing so well, so I will not sell that. The so only difference I see between 92 and now is 92. We didn't use this word. Uh, 92, we said Harshad Bhai will not fail. Huh. He is God. Today we are saying the momentum will not fail. Yeah. Momentum is God. So the only difference is you have maintained an indi you, have, you have replaced an individual uh, aura yeah. with a uh, you know technical aura. So if this breaks, then the skew is your villain. Yeah. It, see, market goes through ups and downs. Right. There is no escaping that. So people will continue to buy ULIPs, people will continue to put money in mutual funds, people will continue to do direct equity trading and people will lose money. All this will happen. Why do we think that this time it is different? So the most dangerous words in investment is this time it is different and my back testing shows that. This is again dangerous. So anything which you do, every strategy, everything, it will not work because it has worked. If everybody does the same strategy, if all of us buy Asian Paints, if all of us buy HDFC Bank, the return that you can get going forward in HDFC Bank has to be like the index, maybe 6%, maybe 7%. So That's let it. me summarize. I, you see that in euphoric markets, you need to reduce your risks. You need to take your profits. You need to go home before the party ends abruptly. And you need to be safe for a good night's sleep. And you should not put yourself in a position where you have to be taken away in an ambulance. Thank you for this uh, video. We will continue our conversation with new topics and more interesting subjects. Thank you, Subra. Thanks.